Well, YouTube has done us all a big favor and outed itself by publicly supporting communist Chinese spies. Welcome to the Free Thought Frontier, and I'm your host, Bill Stone. As I mentioned in my last two Free Thought Frontier videos, Chinese Weaponized British Police and Chinese Spy v. Brendan Kavanaugh, links to that in my description box below. On January 19, 2024, British pianist Brendan Kavanaugh was live streaming himself at a public performance of his piano riffs. In the background of its dream were some Chinese nationals who at first appeared to enjoy the performance. However, they ultimately confronted him and demanded that he delete his footage. When Kavanaugh refused on free speech grounds, the Chinese called the London police to force him to do it. He was able to argue correctly that it was a public live stream and that they had no expectation of privacy. And, of course, if they didn't want to be in the video, all they had to do was take ten steps to the left or the right and be out of the frame. A few days later, it was discovered that at least one outed Chinese spy, Christine Lee, was in the group. They were probably more spies, which is why the Chinese wanted the video ceased and removed. Brendan didn't, didn't do it, so the Chinese sued him. Now there's been yet another twist. A couple of hours ago, Brendan posted a video called YouTube Legal Support Now Involved, links to that in my description box below, showing that the YouTube legal department is now demanding that the stream, I, stream either be removed and or the Chinese faces blurred and their voices removed, which for a piano concert would be akin to just taking down the video. So let's be clear here. YouTube is actively supporting Chinese communist spies. There is absolutely no reason for the video to be touched. The reason the Chinese spies dominate the video is because they accosted Kavanaugh, not the other way around. If they'd simply stepped out of frame when they realized they were in it, there wouldn't have been any problem whatsoever. And again, this was a public performance in a public place. No one has the slightest expectation of privacy. One British barrister on YouTube has confirmed this. There is no legal leg to stand on in the UK. The Chinese demands have been frivolous. Their lawsuit has been frivolous. YouTube siding with them is just another indication that the platform has become a mouthpiece for woke communists. I'd assume that if Brendan had the funds, he could fight YouTube legally, but I can tell you that for smaller YouTubers, that is just virtually impossible. Ultimately, if Brendan doesn't remove the video, he faces having his channel shut down. Now, this has occurred with me once before. Unless you want to pay more money than you earn from your channel, you have absolutely no recourse. Now, while I support any private commercial entity's right to refuse service, and this includes YouTube, the nefarious reason behind it speaks volumes about YouTube's commitment to free speech. So let's be really, really clear. Chinese money is a huge prospect for any media company. All the movie studios chase that sweet, sweet China money, usually in vain because it creates giant dollar signs in their eyes. However, by kowtowing to Chinese demands, YouTube is ultimately showing that it not only has no commitment to free speech, it works actively against it. YouTube is actively anti-free speech and, and, and pro-communist. This is what happens with multinational corporations like Alphabet, the parent company of YouTube and Google, among others. Once they cease being an American company and go multinational, they no longer hold American ideals. But Bill, I hear you say, Aren't you a libertarian? Aren't libertarians in favor of companies growing their businesses to become multinational? Yes, I most emphatically am. But here's the rub. No business can become multinational without government help. Now, I'm an early Gen Xer who was in IT for 40 years. I am older than Google. I'm older than Apple. I'm older than Microsoft. I am older than almost every tech company except IBM, and I helped build some of them. I watched them all evolve from operating out of a garage to having massive campuses in multiple countries. And not a single one of them did it simply by growing their business. They did it all by bribing, sorry, giving campaign contributions to government officials to push their competition out of the way. What libertarians want is a free market. 
That means as little government meddling as humanly possible in the market. That means that government doesn't have the power to favor one company over another. If YouTube or Google wanted to be successful, they should have made better products than their competitors. But that's not what they did. It's not what Microsoft did. It's not what Apple did, Facebook, Twitter. They all paid our representatives in government to pass laws that pushed out their competition. I could cite endless laws that explicitly exempt companies like Alphabet from laws that apply to every other tech company in the industry. I could cite endless sweetheart deals sponsored by government in which only big tech companies qualify. The United States federal government has been pushing competition out of the market for big tech companies since the moment they got large enough to start bribing, sorry, making campaign contributions to our representatives in Congress, the Senate, and the presidency. Now, how does all this happen? One way and one way alone. The federal government is taking actions that are totally unconstitutional. There is no language in the United States Constitution that grants the federal government the power to make laws regarding technology, and I absolutely defy you to find any such language. The U.S. Constitution differs from every founding document in the world for one simple reason. It restricts the power of government to only a few things. Any sane reading of that document will prove that its primary purpose is to ensure free trade between the states and to present a united front in time of war. It has no other significant powers, and under the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution, all other power is reserved to the states or to the people. Most state constitutions similarly limit the powers of state government. The state governments have also grabbed power, whether they can or not, wherever they can, usurping it, where it from where it actually belongs, which is in the hands of the individual. The only way to solve this problem is to get our federal and state representatives to repeal almost every law on the books and or get the president to veto almost every law Congress ever passes and get governors to veto almost every law the state legislatures pass and or get the Supreme Court at both the federal and state levels to rule almost every law on the books unconstitutional. And that will never happen. Every federal congressperson, senator, president, and judge is a power-mad sociopathic narcissist. Almost every state legislator, governor, and judge is a power-mad sociopathic narcissist. Every mayor and city council person in America's major cities is a power-mad sociopathic narcissist. There's a good chance that your mayor and city council person, wherever you are in America, is a power-mad sociopathic narcissist. The one thing that power-mad sociopathic narcissists will never do is willingly give up their own power. It will never happen. It doesn't matter who the candidates are, Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter. They will never willingly give up their own power. I'd like to say it would be different if libertarians were elected, but <laughs> I'm not that naive. Once exposed to the massive, raw power of government, particularly at the federal level, I think that libertarians would turn into power-mad sociopathic narcissists in less than six months. John Dalbert Acton, 1st Baron Acton, born 1834 and died in 1902, is famous for a number of things, but none more than this quote. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely. Now think about that for a minute and take that in, for it is a fundamental truth of human nature. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely. If you think that I, a staunch advocate of individual liberty and guided by the zero aggression principle, would be immune from this, you're fooling yourself. If you think that you'd be immune to it, you're fooling yourself. Every single human being on earth is subject to this principle. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely. It would corrupt me. It would corrupt you, 
and it would corrupt every single human being you know. It corrupted every single person in human history. It corrupts every single person now living. It will corrupt every single person to ever be born as long as the human species exists. It's why communism and socialism always fail, killing millions in the process. In the pursuit of a communist or socialist society, power falls into someone's hands. No matter how pure of heart they were before they had power, it always corrupts them. But Bill, I hear you say, if power corrupts and our modern governments have more power than Lord Acton could ever have imagined, what can we do about it? The answer to that question is really very simple. Nothing. We have long since passed the point of no return. That point occurred long before I was born. The point was probably when President Washington put down the Whiskey Rebellion in 1794. That was when Washington used unconstitutional power to force a tax on a people who just climbed out from under a venomously taxing government. It's been downhill from 1794. Today, our congresspersons, senators, presidents, and judges do absolutely nothing but violate the Constitution 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. The only answer is bloody revolution, something that victim disarmament, which is the correct term for gun control, has made impossible. Under the Constitution, the federal government isn't even supposed to maintain a standing army in peacetime. The, the per entire purpose of the Second Amendment is to keep individuals as well armed as their government precisely so that they could topple the government filled to overflowing with power mad sociopathic narcissists. Instead, the people are eagerly elected them to the point where it's now impossible to dislodge them. And if you think dismantling the deep state is possible, then you're fooling yourself. The deep state isn't deep. It's in every government official, flunky, yes man, and hanger on. You can't dismantle the deep state without getting rid of every single last one of them, repealing every single last law, and then installing new representatives while taking care that they pass maybe three laws a year. Short of that, nothing can be done. So, I'm doing what I can by telling you about it. I'm doing what I can by supporting people like Brendan Kavanaugh. I'm doing what I can by explaining how YouTube is pro-communist and anti-free speech. I'm doing what I can by explaining that Alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, and all the big tech companies couldn't be multinational without bribes. Sorry, campaign contributions to power-mad sociopathic narcissists. But perhaps the biggest thing is what I've done on my second channel, The Tales from SYL Ranch Darkroom. Ever since Brendan Kavanaugh withdrew copyright from his live stream, I've had a copy in the darkroom. Beautifully remastered to 4K 60 frames per second from its original 720p and 24 frames per second. And there's a link in that to my description box below. So far, YouTube hasn't noticed it because my channels are small and I don't get a lot of views. In the event that they notice, I'll probably have no choice but to remove it or face termination of this channel and of the darkroom. However, if that occurs, I assure you that the video will appear on the high seas. To be honest, I might do that anyway, just to make sure it's out there for all time. Now, what can you do in this specific case? Support Brendan Kavanaugh. Download his video, or better still, the darkroom version. It's got much better resolution so that it won't completely disappear from the public consciousness. Upload it to every video service you know. Upload a copy to the Internet Archive. I'm going to. And do it individually. The more people who do it, the more impossible it becomes to erase it from the world. In terms of Brendan Kavanaugh, keep the video alive. Don't let the communists, whether they're in Alphabet, YouTube, your state or federal government, or the government of whatever nation in which you reside, win. Download the video and copy it everywhere you can. The communists can't possibly get everyone. In the immortal words of Princess Leia, the more you tighten your grip, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. 
And that's all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and leave me plenty of comments. I do not engage on social media for reasons I've explained in other videos, but I monitor my YouTube video comments closely, closely and I will engage you here. Share me on social media if you use social media, which you shouldn't, for reasons I've explained in other videos. So thanks for watching the Free Thought Frontier, and I'm your host, Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.